day guys so for today's video we're gonna be sitting here and we're gonna be chatting about some marketing techniques that I've been seeing that the makeup industry has been using and it's just like maybe not everything is done on purpose some stuff really has to be done on purpose maybe some of these are not like intentionally done in order to market but at the end of the day they end up getting like some real good marketing out of it so it makes you wonder was it intentional? <laughs> so what we're gonna be talking about here is I'm gonna be telling you guys five different things that I have noticed recently in the makeup industry of the way that they've been marketing their products, which honestly I think that we should maybe reevaluate the way we think of makeup marketing because things have changed so much that it's almost like commercials are everywhere and we don't even know. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. I'm gonna be talking about five different things that I have noticed are basically the makeup industry showing us commercials everywhere we look. I'm totally not against sponsorships. I'm totally not against anybody making money in a marketing way. I think it's okay. And I think that it's stuff that has been going on for years and brands used to actually pay for spots in magazines in order for them to promote their products under, you know, the best concealer of the year. And you just never knew that that was happening. And you know, like stuff like that has always happened. And it's just not something that was talked about before because you didn't actually have people in front of you that you started to get to know like YouTube. And you just didn't know that that was happening. So this is stuff that's been happening for a long time. But now that social media has turned into what it has turned into, there is different, there's a few differences. And I think that the way that the makeup industry thinks of the way that they market is going to start to shift because I don't think it's going to continue the way it is right now. But let's go ahead and let's get into these five things that I noticed. Now, the first one I want to share with you guys, and this is the one that actually really made me think of doing this video because I was like, wow, this is incredible. I was watching a reality TV show, which is called The Hills, and it was airing the other night, I forgot, on MTV, I think it's on MTV. And I grew up watching The Hills when I was younger, and they have created this like new version of it. So I was watching an episode. There was a part when one of the stars of the show was actually putting on her makeup, and while she was putting on her makeup and talking with their cinematography in this new show, they actually make it look very creative. But as she's putting on her makeup, you actually see them zoom into like the new L'Oreal liquid lips. And she's using like another product from L'Oreal. And there was another episode that she was actually putting on some mascara and they zoom in on the mascara and you could see that it's a product from L'Oreal. And there was another instance that you saw like one of the girls was in her bathroom and they like zoomed in, like they out, they put her out of focus, they zoomed on like some teeth whitening stuff so I was looking at this and I'm like holy crap these are commercials these are paid spots like I don't know a hundred percent sure that they are but it's very obvious that they probably are because they're basically zooming in on these perfectly lined up lipsticks right next to each other all of the same brand all of the same style come on whose bathroom has three lipsticks perfectly placed. It's like product, this is product placement at its best. And this is during a reality television show. And you're seeing basically marketing. That is marketing. And I was watching it going, <laughs> so, I mean, we all know like what reality TV show is really reality, but you know, it also goes with like, sometimes people are like, oh, influencers are talking about makeup, but they don't even use that makeup, but they're being sponsored. Well, I mean, they're doing it in reality TV too, guys. I mean, you're watching these people that this is their reality, but everything in their set is completely set up so that they can make money off of these things. So when I saw that, I kind of went like, wow, is that what we're gonna start seeing too? Maybe while we're watching like movies nowadays, all of a sudden, which I have seen stuff like this happen before, but I wonder if we're gonna start seeing it more that you know, you'll know you be watching a movie and then all of a sudden you'll see them pick up a L'Oreal lipstick and as they're applying it, they zoom in on L'Oreal. But these people are literally pretending to be using a product like if it's in their bathroom, like if it's something they use all the time and most likely those were placed there for some type of ad purpose. So even on reality TV, when you see them using certain products, they probably don't use those products. Whether they like them or not, I don't know. But like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's kind of like, it's an ad and it's sitting right there in front of you and most of us wouldn't have even noticed that, hey, they just did an ad for L'Oreal. So that was an interesting thing that I saw, something new, something I've never actually seen during reality TV. I'm not somebody who watches that much reality TV. Almost like product placement in the middle of a show as the show is airing, 
thought it was an interesting way to show a product, but at the same time, since it's reality TV, it was almost like, it's almost on that fine line of misleading, but yet I understand that it's kind of like a product placement and they're probably sponsoring that show, but do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's kind of weird. So this is number two, Twitter Wars. Now, you guys are probably saying, what? Isn't that negative? Yeah, it's negative, but it's publicity. So I saw there was a Twitter war between James Charles and Wed and Wild just recently. And when I was watching the back and forth, apparently Wed and Wild is coming out with a palette that looks just like the James Charles palette. If you look at them, very, very similar. And even the colors are like arranged almost in the same order. I don't know if the inspiration was from the James Charles palette. Wet n Wild claimed that Morphe bought the James Charles palette, which who knows if that's true. I have no idea. There is two ways that this could go, um, and I don't think that James Charles knew that this was gonna happen. And it just ended up happening this way. When Wet n Wild showed these pictures, people obviously started tagging James Charles in it or whatever, and he, obviously retaliated by saying, oh my gosh, you basically copied my palette, which I get. And I don't even know if they knew it was a marketing technique and maybe they did. And that's what I'm trying to say is that by creating this tweet and showing off this product, they knew that it was gonna get people up in arms because they could relate it to another person's palette, which is the James Charles palette. And it started this back and forth, back and forth and everybody's like, oh my God, oh my God. And it created such a huge, like, people tweeting it. Oh my God, look at this. Oh my God, look, 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 it's only 20 bucks. Oh my God, they copied this. And then, you know, the people who don't like James Charles were all on board and the people who love James Charles were all on, um, up against them. But it created a basically, like, story that was being told everywhere. So if you did not know about this Wet n Wild palette, now you knew about it. And James Charles actually even tweeted to Wet n Wild on his Twitter, which you know he has millions and millions and millions of followers and unintentionally probably defending himself, meaning that all of their millions of followers, the social, that, that influencer, which is James Charles, all of his followers got to see this Wet n Wild palette that they probably didn't even know was coming out. And it was just like a Twitter war that turned into a marketing campaign that was so strong that they got so many people talking about this palette that probably nobody even knew was gonna come out, which they're probably gonna even increase the date. And I even see like now they even have, like if you go on their website, they have this waiting list, like, oh, be one of the first ones to see this palette because they know that they created such a storm of madness by creating a Twitter war with an influencer which has a lot of power. The fact that they were able to get an influencer with so much influence on board talking about a palette that was going against that influencer is kind of insane. And whether it was a marketing technique that they did or not, it worked because everybody was talking about it. And it makes you wonder, is this gonna be something that we're gonna be starting to see? Will brands start to actually fight other brands or influencers or whatnot to grab the attention from their following too on purpose so that you engage with them. And I noticed that somewhere else, somebody else said something just recently. Oh, just recently, Elf did a similar thing because a brand came out with, I can't remember which is the brand it was, came out with like a putty style um, primer and Elf tweeted out a, um, when somebody steals your homework type of thing, like starting a little bit of a Twitter war against this brand. So it's almost like, I feel like maybe this is something that could um, turn into a marketing technique. So that is another one that I thought was pretty interesting. And I think that we should probably second guess anytime that we see these Twitter fights, whether the brand is doing it on purpose or not. So let's talk about number three. So this is something that I keep on seeing brands do. And I think that they're doing this guys because there's such a high demand. This is, so let me get into this first. So let me tell you what it is first. So it's the 24 hour early access presale or the presale before it launches, like four days before. This is a new thing that I've been seeing so much more with brands. Like this has always been around, but this is something that I'm seeing like so much more. 
Now, I have two theories on this. The first one is a huge marketing technique that you think, oh my gosh, if I don't buy this right now, I am going to miss out and then I have to wait. And people get like that, you know, like I get like that too, that I'm like, oh, I wanna get it. You know what I mean? It's kind of like a, it's one of those things like they're dangling a little candy in front of your face and they're saying, you've got 10 minutes to take the candy. It's one of those type of techniques. And this is a theory. I feel like offering the product for sale before everybody else can grab it is going to attract a lot of influencers, right? Because the influencers want to get the products quick. They want to get it before everybody else. So <laughs> this could be completely wrong, but my mind is thinking the brands could save a lot of money on PR if they release the product a few weeks, a week prior to the launch so that it gives the influencer enough time to buy it themselves, promote it for them, and then they release the launch like a week later. Is it that way? I don't know. It Could it be strategically planned? I have no idea, but I will tell you in my experience, sometimes that's what I do. I see it's a pre-launch. I'm like, yes, I buy it. I overnight it to myself or I, or I second day air it to myself or depending on how long it is before it releases. And I get it here, review it for you guys, do all this work for the brand because basically that's what I'm doing, right? I'm showing you guys the products for the brand or you guys the product, whether it be negative or positive, Honestly, guys, whether it be negative or positive, you've got to remember this, it's advertisement. It's hard for me to explain this part because then some people will be like, oh, but that could go against them because if you say negative stuff before the thing launches, you know, if you got it in PR, you would be more inclined to say positive stuff because it's free makeup. And if you buy it yourself, then you're gonna be more judgmental on it. That's a train of thought, yeah. But I also have to say that I feel like what people sometimes don't understand is whether it is a positive or negative review, it's still an advertisement for the brand, if you know what I'm saying. And just because I say that I don't like something doesn't mean that somebody else isn't gonna see it and be like, I actually like that even though she doesn't. So you're still, you're still doing some type of advertisement for them and there has been so many times that things have been like, oh my God, this is such a horrible product, but they blow up because everybody's talking about that product. And then when somebody goes to buy it, they forget. Well, I know that this was like a huge deal, but I can't remember why, because not everybody remembers everything they hear and then people buy it. So, I mean, positive or negative, it's still advertisement, but obviously every brand wants a positive review because that's the easy one, you know? Positive is great. So I'm starting to think that these early access not only is a dangling a candy in front of somebody to try to get them to bite, but also, also guys, it could be so that influencers can purchase the product themselves, especially the ones not on PR, so that they can get more advertising done for them. All right, guys, let's talk about number four. So number four is minis. <laughs> now, I know everybody's like, I love minis. And guys, I like minis too, I really do. I think minis are great, mini this, mini that, everything's a mini, and have you guys noticed how many minis have come out just recently? And guys, minis, even though they are good, and I'm not, there's nothing against a mini here, it's, they're a great marketing tool for a brand, especially a luxury brand. Minis are great because it sucks you into a brand. It's almost like the gateway drug to the brand. Why am I saying that? Because somebody who loves Pat McGrath and doesn't wanna spend a lot of money on their eyeshadow palette buys one of their minis and says, oh, this is phenomenal, I love it. They may consider buying the bigger palette eventually because they have tried the formula. They may. Now, if they had never tried it, they would automatically probably say, I can't, I'm never, I'm not, no, there's no way. I'm not gonna buy that expensive formula. And Natasha Denona started doing this last year and I thought it was very smart because releasing these minis of her larger palettes and making them non-repeat shades, the way Natasha Denona does it, is very smart because not only are you getting a huge audience of people who can afford these $25 minis, which are expensive, 
which are expensive. If you really think of how much product you got, they're making money off of these minis. They're also getting a huge audience to buy the minis and they're also making new customers with these minis. So minis, believe it or not, if you see them popping up here and there and here and there, really is a nice way for the brands to just suck in more people and they're great. I like them. I'm not going to complain, but yeah minis guys and number five this is the last point that i will touch on and that is insta story marketing this has become such a thing guys and i know everybody wants to blame influencers that influencers are the ones doing the most and i will tell you guys the truth a lot of influencers that i have watched and maybe i don't watch some of the ones that are doing all the wrong stuff they always put big ad big this now, the people that don't, a lot of celebrities, reality stars, oh my gosh, they do it so obvious that they're doing story, like promotions, like, I bought this water. And a lot of times, like, I'll see these things that'll be like, I bought this water. This is the best water. Use code water. And you're like, could you have made that any more obvious that it is a promotion? And I don't feel like there's anything wrong with promoting a product. That is fine. And I don't think there's anything wrong with making money off of promoting products because that's the way that people make money. Celebrities have been doing it for years with commercials. You think a lot of these celebrities really drink or eat the stuff that they're promoting? Probably not. And commercials are fine because you know it's a commercial. And I think that people's mentality is they know it's a commercial so they know that the person probably doesn't use that product so they don't really care. You know what I mean? But now with the Instagram and the reality, it's almost like you wanna see truth and you feel like it's not true. And I understand that. Some of these Insta stories are very misleading sometimes because you can really tell and sometimes they don't say it's an ad and they really make it seem like they like a product, but they're pushing it down your throat so much that you're like, well, why? And I almost feel like even sometimes people will be talking about something and I'll be like, is this an ad or are they really serious? And I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe that I'm doing that too. And I do, I do it too. And sometimes I'll talk to people about stuff that I really like. Like the other day I was talking on Instagram about my aerial garden, which is like the, the herb garden that I have. Like I have a little herb garden. I think it's so cool. So I was telling everybody, oh my God, the herb garden, the herb garden. And then I caught myself saying, oh, by the way, this isn't an ad. I don't, you know, and I'm like, well, of course it's not an ad. Why would Ariel Garden pay me to talk about this? But then I was like, you know, it, you have to say it because you almost feel like everything sounds like an ad, right? It's another marketing tool that a lot of makeup companies are using. It's in the stories and it's when people are talking. And so that's another way that the makeup industry has been throwing these kind of like product promotions down our throats without us really sometimes even knowing. But I will say on that point, I actually don't think it's a bad thing for an influencer to pro promote a product at all. I just feel like the way that things are going nowadays that it needs to turn more into like a commercial. Do you know what I'm saying? It's almost like things need to look like a commercial to the audience so that you're still promoting a product, but it's more of a commercial than it's actually you saying, I love this product, because then it sounds weird. Like almost like I feel like people would be more accepting if it was a commercial about a product than if it was, um, I love using this scrunchie and the scrunchie's great because then it's like, oh, well, I don't believe you, rather than, all right, so this is gonna be a quick little commercial about this scrunchie right here. This is the da 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 Like, I almost feel like people would be more accepting of that because that's what we see on TV all the time, and we feel like the person's not lying to us, they're just doing a commercial. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I almost feel like there's like a, there's a line that needs to be changed there, and we're trying to figure out how to make it acceptable, and I feel like some of these ads aren't. I feel like some of them aren't. I do think that it's cool when you actually really love a product and you do a sponsorship on it and you say, I really love this product. I think that's fine. And I really wanna make sure that you guys understand that I think sponsorships are fine. I think ads are fine. I believe there's really no other way to really make money on YouTube besides ads, besides the AdSense, which is not like, that much money? Anyways, guys, those are the five things that I think that the makeup industry has been doing to basically shove commercials down our throats even though we didn't even know that they were happening. But I wanna know from you guys right before I sign off here is what would you guys consider an appropriate commercial or sponsorship from maybe even somebody from YouTube? That's all I have for this video, guys. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Leave me your comments below, give me a thumbs up, all that good stuff, and I will talk to you guys later.